Good afternoon, Mets fans, and welcome to a Wednesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and uh, today I am coming at you a little bit later than normal. I, uh, I watched part of the game last night as best as I could, and Jason Vargas rounded back into form that we've expected him to round back into for quite some time now. Uh, I want to talk about the game, I want to talk about the offense last night, and uh, I also want to touch on the Peter Alonzo situation, which I feel like I've sort of been ignoring for the last uh, last week or so, so I want to get into that a little bit today as well. So I, I have to sort of say, it's it, I blame myself for Vargas last night. Um, midway through the second, I think it was the second inning, or maybe it was the third inning, uh, I made a comment. To, I texted a comment to my buddies that um, I think Jake, I think Jason Vargas has turned a corner. Is what I, what I said, and um, then I was pr uh, promptly smacked with a uh, no, he did not, uh, and uh, that was before he started giving up runs um, with abandon uh, yesterday. But um, I, I, you know, the giant, the Giants, the Dodgers are a good hitting team. You know, I'll give the Giants saying the Giants. I will give the Dodgers that. They are a good hitting team. Um, uh, although their their average doesn't certainly show it, they do hit home runs, and I just never really felt like it was a great matchup for Vargas to begin with. Um, but I had, I really, I don't know, like the first and second innings watching him pitch, he looked like he was in some sort of a groove, or did he, you know, I don't know. It, it seemed, I felt good about it. Let me just put it that way. And uh, boy, was I wrong. Um, Vargas did not get out of the fourth inning yesterday. He um, he did get one out in the fourth, so he three and a third. Um, but then he gave way to the bullpen. Um, Tyler Bashler came in in relief. Uh, did put out that fire immediately um, as best as he could. I think he gave up one of those runs. Allowed one of those runs to score, I should say. Um, but, you know, he did okay. The rest of the bullpen, however, not so much. Um, I, I was the other thing I was texting with my friends about was um, the bullpen, and we had a little bit of an exchange this morning. And you know, between Raim and Seawald and uh, Oswalt and Zamora, you know, the four relievers uh, with plus five ERAs or five plus ERAs rather, um, I look at that group, and I feel like one of them out of that group should be considered as part of the future in the bullpen for the Mets. And you don't have to guess who you think, who I think that should be. It's it's Mr. Zamora. I think Daniel Zamora has a lot of upside. I think he's going to be a, an effective lefty out of the bullpen. And I, I think the Mets should just ride that out and see what they have with him. Um, plus, I, I really don't feel like we've had much time to evaluate what he is and what he brings to the table. Whereby, when you look at uh, Paul Sewald, and you look at uh, Jacob Rehm, these are two guys who, in my opinion, have had many, many chances to prove their effectiveness out of the bullpen. And they've failed more often than they've succeeded. And that, to me, over the course of a full season, um, which I think we've now seen both of them, at least a part of a full season, uh, Rehm certainly less than Seawald. You know, Seawald did have that one good year. Um, he had a, a good year, I think it was 2016, where he was good. And he, he made spot starts, and he um, was mostly effective out of the bullpen. But of late, he's just not trustworthy, and I, I don't, I don't want to see the Mets relying upon him going forward. I feel the same way about Jacob Rehm. Um, he had that one moment earlier this year where he earned a save against the Dodgers, I believe, uh, early in the season. Um, where you know you were sort of scratching your head, and this was during that 11-game stretch where the Mets and Mickey could do no wrong. But you saw Mickey go to Rame in the ninth inning, and you're like, "What the hell? What is he doing?" And then he got the save, and you're like, "Oh, Jacob Rame is good." And then, <laughs> not so much, <laughs> not so much. So Jacob Rame and Paul Sewald out of that group of four, I feel like both of them should be non-tendered. I think they should be um, removed from the considerations for 2019. I, again, I feel like they've had enough chances. The fourth member of that quartet that I just mentioned, Corey Oswalt, I'm looking, I, I would like to keep him around if only because he has shown that he can be uh, can provide some starting depth as a starting pitcher, and he's been decent out of the out of the rotation. I'm not going to say he's been great, but he's certainly been as good as um, Mr. Vargas. So 
Uh, I would say let's keep Oswalt around, but not as a bullpen arm. I think he's a starter, a spot starter, and with Syracuse being the AAA affiliate next year, um, you'll have an, the ability to send a guy like that down and let him stay down and call him up when you need him, and he can be there in a pinch. That's the nice thing about leaving Las Vegas. Um, not to be confused with the 1995 Nicolas Cage, Elizabeth Shue movie about drunks. Uh, which, if you are a Mets fan, you might as well be. Uh, but anyway, uh, so Vargas not good last night. Bullpen not good last night. Um, I was a little bit encouraged by uh, Michael Conforto last night. He hit his 21st home run of the season. Um, I, I liked the way he swung at that pitch. Uh, I liked his at bat, and uh, I'll also tip a cap to Jay Bruce, who also contributed with a home run. Uh, the start of the game, you're sort of, uh, I was feeling really positive. You know, I had the Vargas vibes going. I thought things were going to be good. Um, they weren't, but I felt like after those two home runs, it was 4 nothing. Like, the Mets are hitting Rich Hill. They don't ever hit Rich Hill. We're going to win this game, too. This is awesome. And, and you know, then the wheels fell off, but... Um, not much offense to speak of outside of uh, of the two home runs from Conforto and Bruce. Um, speaking of Jay Bruce and Mets first baseman, I want to talk just really, really briefly about the Peter Alonzo situation. Uh, as we now know, Alonzo is not going to be promoted um, at all this year. He's going to uh, go to the Arizona Fall League instead. He will get no time with the big club in 2018. So that begs the question, why are the Mets doing this? Um, what, what do they have to gain by, by doing this? A lot of people, of course, and I'm talking about Twitter, are conspiracy theorizing that this is all about money and um, you know they, they, the Mets don't want to have to pay him any sooner than they need to and you know they won't cut bait with Jay Bruce because they signed him to a big contract. And while there might be aspects of each of those comments that might be true, I think the bigger thing to look at here is the the, the the roster construction and the 40 man roster. Right now Peter Alonso is not on the 40 man roster and adding him to the team in September would force them to put him on the 40 man and then you have to protect him going forward and again I'm not saying that um, you know, Peter Alonso is, uh, you know, is a guy that you're not going to protect. In fact, I'm saying he's definitely someone you're going to protect. But then you have to start making fringe decisions about other players. Well, if we've got to protect Alonso, does that also then mean that we can't protect Daniel Zamora or, you know, Drew, Drew Smith? Um, who, who knows? I'm just randomly picking names. But the bottom line there is if you bring Alonso up now, what is it going to cost you in a couple of months? And what are you really going to gain by seeing Alonzo play in the month of September during garbage time in baseball? Um, I, I don't know that the pros outweigh the cons. Now look, from a fan's perspective, I would love to see Peter Alonzo up with the Mets in September. I enjoyed the hell out of seeing Dom Smith and Ahmed Rosario come up last year because it, was, it gave us something as fans that we could kind of root for and get behind. Um, this year, I, I'm... With, with the situation being what it is, with the first base uh, in, in, in flux, with Jay Bruce needing to get reps there, with Wilmer Flores needing to stay in the lineup because he's earned that spot for no other reason, with uh, a whole month now to have Dominic Smith play some first base, I would rather not introduce Peter Alonso into an equation that's already pretty packed and try to struggle with giving him playing time routinely. I'd much rather see the Mets be a little bit more conservative about this. It isn't like they're going to be calling him up to, to help push to the playoffs. Uh, that's not going to happen. So I, I'm almost almost okay with this whole decision. Let's not promote Alonzo. Um, the, 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 the brain says it's a good move. The heart says, man, I really want to see it. I, I'm glad that the Mets are thinking more with the brain and not so much with the heart. Um, Terry Collins is thinking with the brain, not with the heart, or thinking with the heart, not with the brain, rather. Um, that's the Matt Harvey goes out for the ninth inning in game five of the World Series kind of thing. That's the Johan Santana completes the no-hitter despite throwing more pitches than he should have. Um, that's thinking with the heart. And, you know, sometimes it's okay. In fact, in one of those scenarios, absolutely was okay, um, the no-hitter. But in the other, perhaps had the brain prevailed, things might have been different in game five of the World Series in 2015. So 
the Alonzo situation, I think the Mets are actually evaluating this properly. I, I'm, I'm in agreement with keeping Alonzo down. Let him play in the fall league in the AFL. Let him come up next year, get a fresh start in spring training to prove that he belongs in the, in the lineup every day, just like Michael Conforto did a few years back, where it looked like Conforto was going to spend the season, you know, 2016 season in AAA. And what did he do? He went out and performed so well in spring training that uh, they, the Mets had no choice but to make room for him on the roster. And that's it. I mean, that's that's where I'm at with this. I think it's a smart move, and I'm hoping that it plays out uh, in the advantage uh, for the Mets. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thanks for, for watching. I appreciate it as always. Uh, if you're not already following me on Twitter, please do so at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.